Hi, and welcome in to the Monday edition, October 17th of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you for joining us. I'm getting ready for a group of people who are coming in here on Wednesday and Thursday. Can't wait. So excited. And uh, according to the Weather Center, we are going to have a change of temperature. We have all the way down into the low 20s while these folks are here. Whoa. As it turned out, weather-wise, we should have done this last week. The trees were just on fire, peaking a lot, and then there is a cold front coming, and it is going to be substantial. So we'll just make uh, that part of our fall celebration. But as we look at the map of the chart this week, (laughs) that's something kind of interesting, because Venus and the Sun are within a degree and a half of each other, really about a degree of each other now. They can join on Saturday evening, but it's kind of funny because all week you have the sun trines Mars today, then Venus trines Mars tomorrow, then the sun trines Pluto on Wednesday, and then Venus trines Pluto on Thursday, (laughs) and then they can join on Saturday, and then on Sunday they both enter Scorpio together on the same day. So really this week, if you break this week down, it's really simple. What are the sun and Venus aspecting (laughs) one about one day apart and then where's the moon and we'll keep an eye on stuff to see if the little moon wobble thing that we talked about on friday that maybe is in the 21 day window we'll see what happens there all right so first of all where is luna as we begin well it's in cancer it's mostly in the later degrees of cancer today As it approaches a 7.50 p.m. void of course, and then those of you who are night owls in the East Coast, 12.45 a.m., that moon moves into Leo. Of course, that's tomorrow. So we have the emotional wrapping up energy today, and then we have some fire energy back tomorrow. Now, the other big aspect today is at 6.05 this evening, Eastern Time, the Sun trines Mars. Now, this trine is in the context of a grand trine because the Sun, it's it's kind of a wide grand trine, really, but the Sun at 24 degrees Libra today, and just keep in mind, everything I'm saying about the Sun will apply to Venus. It just happens tomorrow, but it is absolutely in the applying, waxing energy They go together. So let's just put them together. Sun Venus at 23 and 24 degrees Libra. So this is an air grand trine. Then we go over to Saturn in Aquarius. That's at 18 degrees. So that's why I say is basically you have this about six degrees apart. Because then the third leg of the triangle is in Gemini. That's Mars at 24 degrees. So it's in a tighter aspect to the sun, obviously, because it's exact today. Tonight, the Sun, Mars are tight. Saturn is a little bit loose, but we do have a grand trine. Now, it's a good thing that these bedfellows are in a grand trine and not a grand cross. We will take the trine aspects over the squares and oppositions. So what I like about this is it gives us options. Mars and Gemini, two dual, plural, options. So as the Sun trines today and Venus trines tomorrow, just be looking at your options In areas related to your life in general, there's the sun. In related to your relationships, to your partnerships, to your money, to your aesthetic orientations of incorporating beauty in your life. So what are a couple of ways that you could add one or more of those areas of life? Need more money? Look at what is a dual revenue source that you could incorporate under this trine. Maybe with Saturn in Aquarius, something related to the Internet or technology that could be a second revenue source. Great energy to surf with this. Plus, Mars gives you that power. I mean, it always is that side of the coin that it gives you this amplification to take action and move in the direction that you want to go. And it's connected with the sun in Libra. With Venus, the ruler of Libra, right there. I mean, this is a really rich aspect. Yeah, who knows what the mundane is going to be. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on us. How can we steer our own ship? Now, I mentioned the squares and oppositions. We do have a couple of T-squares in the chart. We don't have a grand cross. These T-squares are separate. 
One of them is a little less impactive. It involves the moon. But the one that has a little more emphasis of what we might take note of is, here are the players, on one side, of course, the north and south nodes of the moon opposite each other, with Uranus sitting within four degrees of the north node of the moon. Then at the pyramid's point, if you will, Saturn. And then, of course, on the other side, the other base of the pyramid is the south node of the moon in Scorpio. So here we are looking at options, Mars in Gemini, about our life, the sun in Libra, maybe specifically in the areas of money, love, beauty, harmony, home, etc., Venus next door to the sun. We are going to build something maybe technologically, something that we're going to get into for the long haul, Saturn in Aquarius. And it might involve astrology because Uranus is in the picture in Taurus, which is also ruled by Venus. That connects that knot. It also emphasizes or reemphasizes the technology piece because it is in that square with Saturn back to Aquarius. And then the whole picture is kind of encased in what can we do to move toward some area in our life where we can grow in this path, in this lifetime, on this way. So sit down with your journal <laughs> and put all of that together and see what comes up. Feel into it. Don't think into it. Feel into it. Kind of a cool aspect. All right. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow.